Hello, anatomy and physiology. I am here today with you guys to show you the lab simulation for our blood type simulation. And um, I'm gonna show you how you can do this at home versus how you might do it um, versus at school, which I'll show there at the end. But in case you wanted to follow along, you're missing the in-class activities and labs, I thought this might be something you can do with um, maybe a younger sibling or yourself. So I'm actually here at school today. It's weird being here without any students in the building. And um, I have kind of my beakers um, here for you. I think what you would need to have is about eight containers. Um, it could be anything. I'd recommend the smaller the better, but um, you know, if you just filled up the bottom of a cup um, pretty thin, that would work. Um, four of which probably should be clear because we're looking at color change. Um, but the ones that hold your blood, the A, B, A, B, and O blood types um, are going to be, it's okay if you just keep those in whatever sort of cup you have. So ideally four small containers. Um, you could use like the little caps that are on medicine droppers or something like that. Uh, you also, like I have here in the classroom, pipettes. Um, if you had a medicine dropper, that would work. But also, I think if you had straws at home, um, that would work as well. I have three um, because we're dealing with three different colors today, um, so I don't mix them. But if you had to reuse the same one, that would probably be fine. You could even use two ends of the same straw if you wanted to conserve that way. Also, you do not have to do this at home. But at the very end of the assignment, you will see that I've posted um, a place for you to upload photos or even maybe a short video of your own lab setup. All right, so those are the materials you might need. Um, I also have paper here just so you can have a white background um, and see the color change a little bit easier on this black top table. And then I've filled up um, three of these cups with water and I've labeled them each are different blood types so um, I have one labeled O this one that's labeled AB is empty right now this one is B just got water in it and A right and they have um, roughly the same amount of water in each one so our A blood type is going to be represented by the color red today and so I'm gonna add not too much but I think that was three drops of food coloring in there. And I'm going to use that little straw to stir it. I put it on the white paper here. You can kind of see the color change that it's red. And um, B will be blue, B for blue. I'm going to add three drops, one, two, three, and give it a stir. Use a different color so I don't cross-contaminate my colors here. Okay, my blue. And then AB blood is going to be purple. So to make this, so it's an even combination, I'm actually going to pour half of the red I just made and half of the blue in here. Try to do as close to half as possible. Now on the screen, it may not look okay, uh, very purple. It kind of looks pretty dark here, but I can see the little droplets on my straw here, giving it the color I think I need. And then O is gonna be clear, so I don't have to do anything to that one. All right, so now that I have my blood type set up, I want to set up my paper. So if you were at home doing this, um, so I'm writing on your cups, I might take a piece of paper and label on the paper where I'm just going to set my empty containers. These are the ones that I'm going to want to be mixed um, with in a clear container, preferably. I'm going to write down on each of these and label them on the paper. Okay, so I've just written down on here um, A, B, A, B, and O. And then down along the side, I wrote the same thing. And in fact, I'm going to organize 
these so that they are lined up with their appropriate rows here. So the idea is that I'm going to have some A blood and I'm going to see what happens when I mix A blood with it, what kind of transfusion that happens. I'm going to have B blood and mix it with A blood and see what kind of um, transfusion happens. I'm going to take AB blood, mix it with A blood, and O blood and mix it with A blood. And the color change should indicate if it was a successful transfusion or not. So to keep your glass where you sitch down, I would test all of row A and then I'd wash out these containers and then I would reuse them for all of row B. I wash out the containers, rinse them out, A, B, and then I would come down and do O. Okay? So if you're at home, that way it cuts down on how much um, containers that you need to use here. Um, and I would be putting samples of each of these in there. So I'll even demo that. Um, since these are larger containers, I'm going to use two milliliters, so a pipette's worth, okay, so that you can kind of see that color in the bottom of it. Okay, ideally, we sort of want it gathered um, so it covers the bottom of whatever container you're using. And this is why smaller will use less. Okay. Um, in my B, okay, container I'm going to put, so this was about two pipettes full that took me to fill up the bottom of my container here. All right. There's my B and my AB. Now to show you how you can use your straw for this, okay, um, if you've ever done the little test where you put your finger over it, okay, um, I'm going to just submerge the straw, put my finger on top, and then carry it over. Okay, so if you don't have a pipette, you can use this little technique okay, to transfer your liquids. At home tricks here. All right. And then my water, I guess I didn't have a fourth pipette handy. You're going to need four straws. Will be, okay, oh. So, okay. Um, I'm going to do this though on a well plate just so you can see the total and final results a little bit more clearly. But again, I wanted to show you what this would look like as far as the setup goes if you were doing this at home. All right, so this video has been for the at home setup, um, but I'm going to transition to using my fancy at school materials.